Okay, so now we're going to do question one. In 1.1, 1 .1, um, we are asked to solve for x. I'm going to start with 1.1.1. 1 .1 .1. So we're having x squared minus 4x plus 3 is equals to 0. So uh, the first step we're going to do, we're going to factorize. We equate to 0. So the factors of x squared is x and x. Factors of 3 such that they give us the middle term is 3 and 1. So we're just going to make them negative, both of them. And then we're going to say x minus 1 is equal to 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0 so x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 3 so these are our x values 1.1.2 1 .1 where we're going to write our solutions to two decimal places So we have five. So we have five x squared minus five x plus one equals to zero, and our quadratic formula is equals to minus b plus or minus the root of b squared minus four ac divided by two a, and our value of a. Is equals to 5 our value of B is equals to minus 5 our value of C is equals to 1 so um, we're gonna say um, X is equals to minus substitute our value of B which is minus 5 plus or minus the root of minus 5 squared minus 4 our value of A being 5 and our value of C being 1 divided by 2 and our value of a being 5. So, um, your solutions of x are supposed to be x being equals to 0 0.72 or x being equals to 0 0.28. So these are your solutions of x for this problem here. We're going to do 1.1.3 1 .1 where we're going to solve this inequality problem here. So we're having x squared minus 3x minus 10 is greater than 0. So we're going to first um, factorize this problem here, right, and find the factors of x squared being x and x. Factors of 10 such that they give us the middle term is 5 and 3. So the larger number takes the sign of the middle term, so it's going to be negative, and this 3 is going to be So we're having x squared minus 3x minus 10 is greater than 0. Then we're going to write the factors um, of this problem here. So the factors of x squared is x and x. The factors of 10 such that they give us the middle term is going to be 5 and 2. 5 is going to be uh, negative because it's going to take the sign of the middle term and 2 is going to be positive. Then, um, because it, this is an inequality and we are trying to solve for x, we're going to write our critical values. So, our critical values are x plus 2 equals to 0 or x minus 5 equals to 0. So, x is equal to minus 2 or x is equal to 5. So, these are our critical values, right? So, remember that um, we want... Um, Solutions of x such that they give us um, y values that are greater than zero. So anything that is greater than zero is positive. So that is the aim for this problem here. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do now, we're just going to write our number line and present our critical values. So we have a critical value of minus two and a critical value of five. So um, uh, then uh, what you can do is, okay, let me write critical value, critical value. 
So we're going to test values before our critical values and after our critical value. So the first value that we're going to write here is minus 3, which is before our critical value of minus 2. And a critical value that is between our crit uh, critical value of minus 2 and 5, we can say uh, 2, right? And uh, a critical value uh, of 5. So we're going to test a value that is greater than this critical value of 5. Um, let's say 6. Right, so you're gonna test these values and identify the values of y. Right, so you're gonna substitute these values in your equation of five x squared minus five x. So you're gonna substitute these values in your equation of x x squared minus three x minus ten. Right, so you will start with your um, x value being equal to minus three. So, so you're gonna substitute it here. And find your value of y. You'll find that your value of y is going to be um, positive in this case. So whatever value it is, it's just going to be positive, right? So uh, this means now that um, any value that is um, less than minus two is going to give you a positive value of y, right? And then you're going to try out x being equals to two, right? And then you'll find that your value of y is going to be negative. So this means now that any value that lies between minus 2 and 5 will give you a negative, negative y value, right? So you're also going to try um, x being equal to 6, this one here. And you'll find that your solution of y is going to be positive, right? So this means now that any value that is greater than uh, your critical value of 5 is going to give you a positive solution of y. So remember that we are interested in positive solutions of y because our inequality is greater than 0. So we can conclude by that, right, um, using our critical value of minus 2 and 5 and say our solution of x, x must be less than minus Two, right for us to get a positive solution of y or x must be greater than 5 for us to get a positive solution of y so these are our solutions for this problem here do 1.1.4 um, you're going to solve for x for this sad equation so we're having three root of x being equals to x minus 4. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to square both sides, right? Um, then we will have, uh, so this squared will uh, square this 3 and this root of x, right? So you're going to have 9x being equals to, so let's expand this, we'll have x minus 4 and x minus 4, right? So um, let's find the product of this problem here using our FOIL method. Um, so we, we're gonna say, um, we're gonna say 9x being equals to x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16. So we have 9x being equals to x squared minus 8x plus 16. Then um, we're just going to transpose this 9x to the other side. So you're going to have x squared minus 8x plus 16 minus 9x equals to 0. And then we collect the like terms and write in standard form. So you're going to have x squared minus 8x minus 9x plus 16 being equals to 0. And then um, we're just going to write our x squared minus 17x plus 16 being equals to 0. Then we factorize from this point uh, here. So we're going to have x and x factors of x squared. And um, factors of 16 such that they give us the middle term is going to be 16 and 1. So we're going to have negative um, both factors. Then um, x minus 1 equals to 0 or x minus 16 equals to 0. So x is equals to 1 or x is equals to 16. Remember, this is a sad form um, equation, so we need to test 
each value of x and define whether it is um, it is working right whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side right so um, I did my um, checks and concluded that x is not equal to 1 so there's only one solution of x here which is x being equal to 16 now we're going to do 1.3 right and we are given if x if 3 okay so now we're going to do 1.3 right and the statement reads as follows if 3 to the power of 9x is equal to 64 and 5 to the power of uh, root of p is equal to 64 calculate without the use of a calculator this expression here right so um what we need to note is this we're having 3 to the power of 9x being equal to 64 and we're having 5 to the power of root of p being equal to 64 so we need to note these expressions here before we solve so we are given an expression of 3 to the power of x minus 1 all to the power of 3 divided by the root of 5 to the power of root of p right so um the first thing we're going to do here um we're going to solve this root of 5 root of p right um gonna say um but the root of 5 to the root of p right is equals to 64 right uh, remember remember that 5 to the root of p is equal to 64 right so um what what we gonna do is we're gonna say okay fine it's equal to 64 but it's not really equal to 64 because it's 5 root of p being equal to 64 right so for us to remove this uh, square root we need to square um So, um, for us to so, um, we are given that three to the power of nine X is equal to sixty four. And we are also given that 5 to the power of root of p is equal to 64. Then um, our expression is given as 3 to the power of x minus 1 all to the power of 3 divided by root of 5 to the power of root of p, right? So um, what we can do is we can uh, solve the bottom, right? Um, if you take a look, let me do this take a look um, let's solve this yeah we're having 5 to the power of root of p being equal to 64 so if we put a square root on 5 then it means we have to put a square root on 64 right so once we put a square root on 5 it makes it similar to the bottom right so now we know that the root of 5 root of p is actually equals to 8 right because the root of 64 is 8 so let's take the positive 8 and not the negative 8 so now we know the substitute of root of 5 root of p so instead of writing this root of 5 root of p we're just going to write 8 right and then um looking at this 3 to the power of uh, 9x equals to 64 um we're going to write 3 to the power of uh, 3x all to the power of 3 right so just simplifying this 3 to the power of 9 x right so we know that if you multiply this 3 inside it's going to still give you 3 to the power of 9x right so it's equals to 4 all to the power of 3 right so 
which we know four to the power of three is equal to 64. So um, then uh, these three will cancel out. So you will have three to the power of three X being equal to four. So whenever we see three to the power of three X, we're just gonna substitute it with four. Now let's simplify the top before we substitute what we just found. So we're gonna have um, this three will multiply everything that it finds inside. So it's going to be three to the power of, so let me write it um, here aside. So it's going to be three to the power of uh, three into X minus one divided by the root of five root of P, right? So the three will multiply everything inside here. So it's going to be three to the power of three X multiplied by three to the power of minus three divided by the root of five root of P, right? Remember I said um, the three to the power of three X is equal to four. So um, instead of writing this three to the power of three X, we're just gonna write four equals to four multiplied by three to the power of minus three divided by, and also remember I said, instead of writing root of five to the power of root of P, we just gonna write eight, right? Um, because it's equal to that. So um, we're just gonna write eight at the bottom here, right? So, um, and then we're having, so we know very well that uh, four goes twice in eight. So we will have three to the power of minus three divided by two, right? Because four goes twice in eight. Then we will have, um, let's just take this three to the power of minus three to the bottom. So we have one divided by two multiplied by three to the power of three. So three to the power of three is 27. So multiply by two will give you 54. So it's going to be one over 54. So this is the solution for your